he got his hands on a Stax, and he was asking me, um, hey, why, how come I can't go onto my Stax and tap Bitcoin and see my Bitcoin balance? What am I doing wrong? Uh, or why can't I go on into my Ethereum app and see my Ethereum balance of my uh, tokens? Uh, why can't I swap tokens on my Stacks device? Isn't it supposed to be like bigger, better device, right? Why can't I do that stuff on the Stacks? It has this great screen, you know, it seems like, um, it's not everything it, I expected it to be. Well, the answer to that question is that if you were able to view and manage your Bitcoin balance on the device, it would require internet. And if you wanted to do a swap on your Stacks device, it would require internet, the Stacks to have internet access. The, the Stacks or any ledger device or any Trezor device or really any hardware wallet does not, is not meant to be connected to the internet. It is where the private key is stored safely and securely. Now, requ re transaction requests come into the device, and then uh, you can authorize those or reject those. You saw me reject a couple already tonight. But that's all the device is designed to do because it is the security device. So when you think of a wallet, you think a lot of people think of a wallet as, hey, I want to be able to see my balance. I want to be able to see my transaction history. I want to be able to swap and do all that great stuff like I can do in Ledger Live. Uh, that is Internet stuff, right? That is, that is the public component of the wallet. So when we use the term wallet, it's a very nebulous term. Uh, it's not a very specific term. Uh, and then they call these things hardware wallets. And I get that. It is a piece of hardware. And it is a component of the wallet. But the entire wallet is the public part and the private part. The public part is over there on Ledger Live. That's the part that connects to the internet, connects to the blockchain, allows you to manage your balances, do your swaps and trades, and your transfers, in and out transfers. But this part of the wallet, this device, is the security side. This part of the wallet is concerned with generating the private key, keeping the private key safe, and cryptographically signing transactions with that private key. The private key never leaves the device. The device never connects to the internet. The only thing that happens on this cable is incoming requests and outgoing authorizations. They're cryptographically formatted, and if they are not uh, cryptographically formatted and the hashes don't match, they get rejected. So all these people that are worried about hackers and malicious ledger employees and all this other, you know, fantasy land, paranoid stuff, the, the device is designed to prevent that sort of nonsense. Right? The device is a security device. It has lots of countermeasures against physical attacks and software attacks. Right? So we need to think of this device that I have in my hand as more than just a wallet. It's just a piece of the wallet. I like to think of it more as a security device. And when we talk about security devices, we're, I'm equating it to the chips you have in your ATM card, the chip you have in your credit card. Um, all of these ubiquitous security devices out there in the real world, uh, employee uh, ID cards that allow employees access to areas of where they work. You know, if they're a high-level employee, they have access to more secure areas, right? And all of that is contained on their little security device, on their ID card that usually has a chip embedded. That's exactly what this device does. It protects your secrets. It protects your information. It protects access to your cryptocurrency. So it's more precise to think of this device as a security device rather than a crypto hardware wallet.